you've got your own plate. Why not put John Dickerson, Chuck Todd, Jake Taffer, the three big anchors, Chris Wallace, number four for the Sunday show, put them on the Trump Express and go visit the, the three eyes and do what every presidential candidate has done before to burnish their foreign policy chops. Well, I think something like that could happen, to be honest. We certainly have the right aircraft to do it, but I think something like that could happen. And, you know, my relationship's been very good with most of the people you just named, and they're starting to treat me more and more fa fairly. Uh, Zogby, I don't know if you just saw, but Zogby just came out with a poll that has me very high, has me actually gone, gone up quite a bit since the debate. Have you seen that poll, you? Yeah, I did, and I also saw that you won the uh, the morning call report. Uh, you're ahead in all four polls, in fact, this yeah, morning. Yeah, we're right? leading so. in all of them, but the Zogby was pretty substantially up uh, since the debate, and they did it from, and he's a highly respected, you know, it's a very highly respected poll. Uh, the NBC poll was great also. Uh, so I was on the set to meet the I mean, press when they showed that. All of them. So I think something like that could absolutely happen, and uh, it would be my honor. All right, now, now I'm not perfect, I like to say. I'm just the best on radio, and, and you weren't so happy with me last time, so I want to go back to foreign affairs now, but with fair warning. No, no gotchas, no tricks. Okay. Pakistan is the most dangerous country in the world long term other than Iran because it's got 90 or more nuclear weapons, and they got the Taliban. If it goes unstable and you're the president, Donald Trump, what are you going to do? Well, number one, it is probably the most dangerous because of the fact it has the nukes. And, you know, you might add North Korea to that group because there you have a total madman. At least in Pakistan, you have some semblance of sanity at this moment. But it could go rogue and something like that could happen. And I think you have to get, and it's involved right now anyway, but you have to get India involved. India's the check to Pakistan. And you have to get India involved. They have their own nukes. They have a very powerful army. They seem to be the real checkmate. They seem to be the real, the real group. And I, I would start talking at that level very, very quickly. But look, you cannot have a rogue group with nukes. You can't have it. We've got it already. You know, one of the things I brought up at the debate, I got no credit for it, and now everybody's talking about it as North Korea. I said, wait a minute, folks, we're talking now. During the debate, and you remember, I think you remember yes, when I, I mentioned it. I yes, said, we're I talking so much about Iran, and they don't have nukes at this moment. They may have them fairly quickly based on this ridiculous deal that was made, but they don't have nukes. You have a madman over in North Korea who actually has nukes, and he says he's going to use them every two weeks. He pops up and says he's going to use them. Nobody ever talks about it. So since I said that, I've noticed that Rubio and others have been talking more about North Korea. You have a lot of hot spots, but Pakistan is a serious problem. They have weapons that work, and they have a lot of them, and I think we have to deal very closely with India having to do with well, that, that. I, I agree with that. Would you be prepared to send American troops, as President Obama did, to get Osama bin Laden to go and get their nukes if it became an unstable? Well, let me tell you, it's so important to me. If I won, I, I don't want to be talking to you, you, it, and all of these people about what I want to do. You have to have a certain, uh, you know, people can't know exactly what your intentions are. And I tell people the process that we have is so ridiculous. Give your exact, what are you going to do against ISIS? What are you going to do against this? Well, what do you, you want to have a certain amount of, uh, you want to have a little bit of guesswork for the enemy. And I just don't want to be telling people, and, and this is, by the way, this has nothing to do with lack of knowledge, because I think I know as much about Pakistan as most other people. But I will tell you, I don't want to broadcast my intentions. I don't want to have, I'm so transparent, I'm so open, here's what we're going to do. They have to guess. They have to be able to say, you know, he's unpredictable. One of the articles came out recently about my business dealings. And a very respected man said that Trump is one of the greatest business in the world, businessmen in the world because he's totally unpredictable. We never know what he's going to do. And you know what? I want to be unpredictable with this, too. I don't want to be like Obama where he's always saying, you know, we're going to go – in two weeks we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that. And I'm saying to myself, can you imagine General Douglas MacArthur or General Patton? They're spinning in their graves. So when you talk about Pakistan, and let's say they go rogue – I don't want to really be saying what my initial thought is. Also, my initial thought may be much different from what I want to do at the time. But I want them to not know what my thought process is. Does that make any sense to you? It makes, it makes perfect. It's Nixonian, actually. And I, I said that the last time, even in the interview, that people thought you'd uh, stumbled around. And I said, actually, gave a very Nixonian answer on China. You just did again. Last question. You did not get to answer the global warming question. We ran out of time. And again, 11 people on the stage. You got the most time, but it was still not enough time for everyone. 
Do you believe that the temperature of the Earth is increasing, and what would you do if you do believe that vis-a-vis -vis global uh, climate change? Well, first of all, I'm not a believer in global warming. I'm not a believer in man-made global warming. It could be warming, and it's going to start to cool at some point. And, you know, in the early, in the 1920s, people talked about global cooling. I don't know if you know that or not. They thought the Earth was cooling. Now it's global warming. And actually, we've had times where the weather wasn't working out, so they change it to extreme weather, and they have all different names, you know, so that it fits the bill. But the problem we have, if you look at, you know, our energy costs and all of the things that we're doing to solve a problem that I don't think in any major fashion exists. I mean, Obama thinks it's the number one problem of the world today, and I think it's very low on the list. So I am not a believer, and I will, unless somebody can prove something to me, I believe there's weather, I believe there's change, and I believe it goes up and it goes down and it goes up again, and it changes depending on years and centuries. But I am not a believer, and we have much bigger problems. You know, I talk about global warming. You know, to me, the worst global warming, and I mentioned this to you once before, is nuclear warming. That's our global warming. <laughs> because we have incompetent people, and we have these rogue nations, and not even rogue nations anymore. You know, we had a case where Vladimir Putin about three months ago threw out the nuke word, and I never thought I'd hear that from a place, you know, from Russia. But he said they better, essentially, they better be careful because, you know, we're a nuclear nation. That was a hell of a statement for him to make. And that's a statement that's made because of a lack of respect.